Yo, welcome to Gibbo Garage. Today we're doing a relative compression test on the T25. So to start off, we've got a little bit of setup before we get down to the scoping. We're uh, going to have to stop the starting, and that's where we're going to use this clamp to clamp off our fuel line. We're going to clamp that off just after the filter, and uh, then we're going to turn the engine on and run it until it runs out of fuel. And then we know it's not going to start, ready for us to do a relative compression test. Alright, fuel line clamped off, let's go and run it till it shuts off. That's all of our fueling covered. Both of those twin carbs are empty. Now let's set up the scope. Right, so we've got the big old Pico. Let's get that plugged in. I'm going to uh, set you up on the laptop. And we're going to open the Pico software. Once we let that load up. I'll take you to the amp clamp and show you what we're connecting to. Today our probe is going to be the high current current clamp, 600 amp max current, and uh, I'm going to turn it on. I don't know if you can see our power light is now lit up, and uh, we're going to connect it into the scope and then zero it. Right, as you can see, we are right on the zero line. Which is lovely. I am going to set up our probe. We need 600 amp current clamp. It's in DC. Beautiful. And now we've got a plus or minus 50 amp setting. I'm going to increase that a little bit. Seeing this with relative compression test. And our zero line is at a good place. So. Let's take you to uh, where I'm connecting this to. Now we're going to go underneath. And then we're going to go and get a torch so we can see what we're doing under here. So, here we are underneath the car. There's a start motor in front of us. Uh, we are trying to get onto the big battery cable. So, head easy, get your amp clamp around it, job done. Now, let's go back up top. Now for our sink, so we know which cylinder is which, we're going to be using the inductive ignition clamp. We're going to go for cylinder number one. Let's uh, use a bell housing bolt from here, see how good that does at first. And then run that over to the scope. So for the capture, we are going to be using a one second per division on the time base. We've got a 500 amp scale for our amp clamp, and we've got a 50 kilovolt scale for our sync probe. And we're going to go and crank it over. So I'm going to get some cursors involved down on that blue channel. Now if we're taking the, inject the uh, injector, the ignition sink from cylinder 1, that means this is cylinder 1, firing orders 1, 3, 2, 4, so cylinder 1, and four have slightly higher compressions than cylinder three and two in the middle, and then back to cylinder one obviously afterwards. Um, we've got here the initial spike of how much energy in current, in amperage, 
that we're using to start turning the engine over and then this is each compression of each cylinder or each peak of amperage is the peak of compression in the cylinder so we're going to start from kind of around here on the line where they're all fairly evened out and let's say the highest and let's call that the lowest and we've got a difference of 9 amps and now just to finish this off we're going to do a regular compression test of a gauge and see what these numbers mean in, in terms of PSI but by using this if you're not filming it it's a very quick very easy way just to quickly check all of the cylinders and all of their compression on the engine without having to pull the plugs particularly on the slightly more difficult uh, air cooled engines it's a lovely easy way to check your compression so let's go on to the, uh, the regular old school gauge PSI compression test next now looking at the results the, uh, the amps relate pretty closely to the PSI readings I mean they're not exact but they're in the right ballpark the cylinder 2 amperage does seem a little bit low for the PSI reading but it's definitely in the right ballpark and from experience now I've done a couple of these tests on a few campers these are all in a good range for an air cooled engine with good compression now considering we're measuring the amount of electrical energy being used to turn the engine over including all of the friction involved in the valve train, the oil pump, all of that not just the actual compression pressures the results of these tests are actually pretty useful for an air cooled engine with running issues and terrible access to the spark plugs to do a, a compression test I'd definitely suggest a relative compression test as a quick and easy way to help troubleshoot those drivability issues I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.